Hi, my name's Katie and welcome to my channel. So we're here with the king of DIY, Joey, today. What's up guys? And we're going to be checking out his fish room here. So I've traveled all the way from Australia to Nova Scotia in Canada. I got that right, didn't I? You got that right, but it's called the Aquarium Gallery, Katie. Sorry, the Aquarium yes. Gallery. And it's also, it's not the fish room. I Leave. was calling it that before. You don't call it the fish room. It's the gallery, the Aquarium Gallery. And so we're going to do a little bit of a tour, a little bit of a walkthrough in this video today. Mm -hmm. So I'll let you show us the way through. Is there anything you wanted to say before we get going? I think it, I think I've said so much over the last 15 years of making YouTube videos. I think a lot of people are like, just get to the fish. So there's a few things I want to show you and even show your audience uh, of things that we're going to have to start outside. First and foremost, the aquarium gallery is a separate building from my house. It's yes. not in my house. I'm not that crazy. I, I am pretty crazy, but not that crazy. Just crazy enough to have a whole separate room for your fish. <laughs> <laughs> just a whole different one. house. Uh, the first thing you're going to see when you come into my backyard is my failed pond. You guys might remember that I dug this and built this entire decking system and this six foot deep swimming pond. Uh, was it three years ago? I think it was. And this past fall, we had a massive hurricane come through and essentially knocked down all the most of the beautiful trees that we used to have. And, um, knock down a lot of other things so i'm still trying to repair it but one of the other things is because we were getting torrential rains it started to wash out the back end of the pond and it's kind of like sinking towards that end so i put this floaty here so you can't notice it as bad well, it's well. like a pool because pools are slanted like that like they have a deeper end yeah that's what it yeah, is it now it's it my, like my do-it-yourself deep end yeah that just randomly happened <laughs> it's being treated right now and, and we're going to just convert it for this summer again uh just to swim in so long as i can make sure that there's no leaks or anything like that and right now it's perfectly fine. One of the things that I like about it is that although the water is crystal clear, you can't really see to the bottom because it's all blacked out. Um, but if I put something in there, you can clearly see that you can technically see into the water all mm. the way to the bottom. Yeah. But it makes for a really cool experience when swimming in it. And that's because it's a black pond liner. Uh, but a lot of people ask for updates on the uh, pond. And this is it. Uh, the hurricane destroyed it for the most part. Um, and I took most of the materials that it did destroy it and I built a six foot tall fence behind you. <laughs> Cause it used to have all those, that fake leaves and stuff. It had mm -hmm. lattice on it. It was lit up with lights. It was an absolutely beautiful um, little pond. And uh, now it's just like a barren thing in my backyard. Before we go in the gallery, I'm going to bring you in my house, into oh, the basement. Oh, the basement. You yeah, haven't I haven't actually seen the basement. Yeah. And the gallery as well. I had a little bit of a look at it last night, but I haven't like really had a chance to take it all in. I was a bit jet lagged when we looked at it last night. So <laughs> that'll be good. I decided I'd take a couple 180 gallon aquariums and build them into the walls. This is my abandoned project. You're supposed to be able to sit here and watch TV, look at the fish. This is all fake um, styrofoam that I carved out with a heat gun and um, wires. Oh, you made that yourself? It. Yes. Oh, it looks real, like in real life as well. I don't know how to show up on camera. <laughs> DIY. <laughs> it, yeah, literally looks real. You wouldn't know that that's not yeah. real brick. I thought it was just a fun little way to to uh, create like a little sitting area. Although, like I said, it's abandoned. Uh, it's an abandoned project for now, um, mm -hmm. which is unreal because I know a lot of your viewers will get upset. Like, how do you possibly dealing with empty tanks? Yeah. I would kill me not to be able to fill them and stuff. But you're going to find out why it's abandoned because we got something else. So the gallery is where my focus began to go in terms of I've got a lot of new things going on out here and I think people on your channel are going to see a lot of what I'm doing before my oh, people on my own okay. channel are going to see it but if you guys want to come in this is my 700 gallon piranha aquarium housing 30 red belly piranha those plants are real the wood in the yeah. front is real the moss everything in here is real except for the tree trunks those are all fake obviously Oh, and in the middle is something that you're going to get here Ooh, soon. Oh, soon. <laughs> or will you get that one first? Yeah. <laughs> and this is the stuff that I always lose. <laughs> but I still lose. That's a great idea. Yeah. I love that. Pin it all up there. Um, I was going to say I'm amazed by that again, but like you're the DIY king, so it makes sense. So you'd be doing stuff like that. <laughs> it's missing stuff already. I'm already losing it. <laughs> and it, this is gorgeous as well. Like I was blown away when I saw this last night. Like the plants, they're mm -hmm. so healthy. Because I'd seen this on YouTube, yeah. but it, it hits different when you see it in real life. Well, from front to back, it's five feet deep and it can't really show depth. It, it looks murky sometimes yeah. on your videos, but it doesn't in real life. I don't know no. how to show up on mine, but... Like, it's gorgeous. Most of the plants in here are cryptocorin, um, 
and they are just, I'm a lot, I don't even do anything with this tank. I don't yeah. dose it. There is a nice aqua soil in it that they're growing in, mm. and that should last me about three or four years. Mm -hmm. uh, we're entering into the second year this tank has been established, uh, and these piranha used to be about dime size at one point. And this, is that Java fern? It's a Java okay. moss. Java moss, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a, it's, Wow. Depending on the lighting, and you're going to get a really good idea of it, you can see how it's growing on this piece of wood here, mm. because it's not well lit up as it is up on that piece. Mm. So this is a like a weeping moss. Mm -hmm. When it grows, and if it's getting enough light, it will just drop, almost lay flat and drop off what you're putting it on. But if it's not getting enough light, it's going to start reaching for the sun. Right. But that looks beautiful though too, when it's reaching up. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's thick enough. All of these are self-propagating as well, so I technically don't have to do anything. Uh, this plant here isn't mm. supposed to be there. I never did this. Mm. This is just because I'm so good at growing plants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not good at growing plants. This just happened randomly, but this is the same plant as that big one there. Oh. Uh, and it's the same as like, well, any one of these like grass things that so you can kind of see. you didn't set this up. You didn't plant this there. No, this was oh. just supposed to be, uh, just sand, white oh, sand. It looks like when people do aquascapes and they purposefully put the grass at the yeah. front. Well, these plants self-propagate by shoot, sending off runners. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a mother plant and it will send off little runners. Uh, and the runners is a tiny little baby plant that keeps going in and to the next plant, and to the next plant, yeah. to the next plant. Um, but because I have this moss on, these, on this wood, and this is gonna upset a lot of people, this was never supposed to be in here, I just, can only grow plants in this tank. It's probably due to the lighting or something, oh, but in the window maybe. These these this wood is for new tanks that I'm setting up. I've been growing this moss for like I want to say like 6 months. Oh, this is what I'm moving? No. Yeah. No, yeah. it looks so Sorry. good in here. Uh, over here. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is Tyrese the Fahaka puffer. Uh, he's a friendly guy. And he ha this tank is uh, about 70 gallons. It's 32 inches by 32 inches by mm. about 17 inches tall. Uh, and in the center is his uh, flower arrangement that he attracts uh, future <laughs> Fahaka wives, perhaps. In fact, I don't know if uh, Tyrese is male or female. I've never cared because he's just an individual pet fish. But um, all, so all within the plants is Anubius and Java fern. Mm -hmm. This here is technically just a holding tank for my macro algaes. All of this is saltwater algae. Mm -hmm. You might notice how beautiful it is in contrast to what we get in the freshwater hobby. Mm. Freshwater algae is disgusting. Saltwater algae is kind beautiful. of beautiful and it looks mm. like a plant. It does. Uh, so I've been growing this stuff for about a year as well. And we're going to be transferring this to a new saltwater system for my saltwater planted aquarium. This rack is a rack of empty tanks. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding. In this tank there are, an uh, it's a fish. Well, there's three of them right there. They. Um, they're see-through, so you can't really see them that well. They're a translucent fish. There's three here. here. Are you tricking me? Two here, two. No, you're joking. I am joking. <laughs> it's empty. There <laughs> are like translucent gullible. fish. Um, but this is my new racking system that I built. I built all the aquariums. I built the rack. I built the filtration. I even built the lighting. And these, believe it or not, are just plastic flower pots turned upside down. No way. With a hole drilled into them and a light bulb put in. A common household light bulb. So each one of those might have cost seven or mm -hmm. ten bucks. So we have fresh water up here and down low we're going to be doing salt water. The salt water is cloudy because I added in all the substrate before you came so it wouldn't look too plain because really bare tanks don't look that great. First tank is 60 gallons, 40 gallons, 20 gallons. Four feet long, 32 inches long and 16 inches long. All made of, out of acrylic and we built them in like two days. Building the tanks was incredibly simple. All of the tanks are on the same filtration system. The top filter is for the fresh water and the bottom is for salt. The freshwater filter is complete and ready to go. The saltwater filter is not. So I'll be able to add in fish uh, to this tank. I think actually Katie and I are going to be setting one of these up. I'm gonna get her to help me move Tyrese over to the end tank, bring his flower bouquet arrangement over with him <laughs> and move Tyrese. Have you ever moved a big Pahaka freshwater puffer? No, I never. No. So she's gonna be doing that. Um, and we might get her to take the wood that I need out of the piranha tank <laughs> and get her to put it in here. Uh, basically, I value my fingers too much and Katie seems to be okay because she is from Australia and they are yeah. surrounded with deadly animals all the time. So yeah. you'll be good, you'll be yeah, fine. used to it. Right now this system's really boring, it's empty, but it's gonna be absolutely fascinating to watch it come along. Behind me, 
Yes, I love this. This is one of my favorites. It's a 2,000 gallon concrete aquarium <laughs> that I built uh, six years ago. And it is just a mix mash of fish for now. Um, we do have five Oscars. We have some Severums. We have my ultimate blood red Asian mm. arowana. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Not a Saratoga. Arowana. It is not a Saratoga, which is the Jardini, which is what you have in Australia. But yes. it's the, uh, the Saratoga is the closest looking fish yes. to the Asian. And then we have a red tail catfish. We have a oh, yeah. sunshine pleco. I love that catfish. They and get the, huge too. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna get big. And then we have a bicher in the back over there. Yeah. The bicher is eventually gonna have to come out and so will the sunshine pleco. Oh, they get too big. Yeah, no, wow. the catfish will eat them. Oh, true, yeah. yeah. But uh, the idea with this tank someday is to be able to get in it with these big tamed fish. Mm -hmm. And perhaps, uh, I was thinking maybe I could put a saddle on him and uh, maybe like ride him around in here like a little <laughs> sea-doo or something. I don't think that'll happen, but uh, for now, I make Tamara take rocks out of here for me. Are we gonna feed them? We're, yeah. You are going to be feeding feed all them. of these fish. If this <laughs> tour, and if this, what, what, how many likes do your videos typically get? Oh, like between 500 and 1,000. Okay, if this video gets 2,000 likes, for the first time, I will allow somebody else to feed all of my monster fish. Ooh. Don't give the like just yet. <laughs> Wait till you see the other fish that she might have to feed, and I think that you guys will agree. And, and she can make another video of all the feeding and whatnot, and uh, put that up, but you, you gotta get the likes. So how many likes, what did I say? Uh, 2,000. 2,000, so double what she says she typically gets. <laughs> Do the Oscars breed in here? They might, and they could eventually. Uh, I, they started off in a 180, 180 gallon aquarium, and then I moved them into here. And then I thought, well, I'm going to move them into another 180 that's under my desk mm. that I just built. Mm. And they weren't doing, they weren't looking that great in there. So I moved them back to the 2000. Yeah. I thought, what could I put in here? I thought maybe I could put an eel in here of some sort. I didn't know at the time that I wanted to do the eel that I was going to be able to get an electric eel. These guys can put off eight, six to 800 volts of electricity. To put that into perspective, and I don't want you to do this. Oh, maybe for the people I don't like, you can go ahead. Take a fork and stick it in your outlet. The electric catfish will put off five times that shock, but you have to touch them. For 5,000 likes, no. Katie will pet my electric eel. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. Uh, but what then, were you saying last night? You were saying that you can put your head in the water though. You just can't I, uh, touch them. Well, you can put your hand in the and, water. And you were like, it should be okay-ish. It should be okay. Go ahead. No. Put your hand in. Come on, put your hand in. Come on, Katie. <laughs> she, 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 she booped it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's fine. He's you can looking. put your hand in. Um, You're attracting him. He thinks it's food. <laughs> oh, is he coming over? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's struggling he, animal. He, he, he seems slow though, so I, I think you'll be okay. Yeah. Well, when you feed him. When I feed him, I'm feeding this one. You're feeding all my monster fish. He's not a fish, he's an The monster fish are the piranha, the monster fish are the Oscars, the red tail catfish, Asian era one. And then of course- Oh, he's moving now. Is he around? Yeah, oh, he's, moving yeah now. he's coming out. Yeah, so the electric eel is technically not an eel at all. What, does it, what do you think it more so looks like? Uh, it looks like um, ghost knife fish. It is a knife fish. Yeah, it's in knife the knife fish, fish family, yeah. I should say. That makes sense. Yeah, so it's not a true eel, but the electric eel is one of the most studied and documented fish on the planet and for obvious reasons it has such a unique ability it has organs within its body and in the back of it it's its sax organ mm -hmm. s-a-c-h mm -hmm. and what that does is it's constantly sending off a very dull electrical signal and it uses it for navigational purposes because if you look at its face uh, really closely it has tiny little eyes basically it doesn't need them and then it has the hunter's organ and another one called the main organ which are what gives off the high electrical charge which it uses for defense as well as hunting so if there is a live fish near it if i get too close to it like say within probably a foot or two feet mm -hmm. uh, like if I touch the water now and he thinks I'm food, he could put off an electrical charge that I might feel. Oh, oh, so you can feel it in the water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky I booped it then. But I knew at the time that you wouldn't. He was asleep, yeah. Can't I knew it because 
I am an expert on electric oh. eels because I've had them for a few weeks. <laughs> no. uh, my main pride and joy, oh. and the reason uh, the gallery kind of has the 2000, this obnoxiously big tank, is for uh, my Black Diamond Stingrays. This is a trio. We have a female, a female and a male. The male is the smallest one. Now, mm -hmm. you might be wondering what they're doing in here. This is their breeding tank. I'm able to target feed them and control their environment a little bit easier as opposed to in the 2000. Mm -hmm. The male is a little stunted, shout out to the Short Kings. So this tank makes it a little easier for him to get these women as well. He's so cute. <laughs> yeah, they do this constantly. I can see his teeth when he does that. Oh. He, I'm scared to feed them. They don't yeah. seem like they don't the stingrays I've fed before. <laughs> they don't have teeth. Being a member of the Elasmo oh. branch family, they also do not have a single bone in their body. Wow. They're filled with yep. hardened cartilage, uh, and their skin is actually covered in denticles, just like a shark, no scales, and wow. their, their teeth are technically just rows of uh, denticles as well. Oh my gosh. So they have crushing teeth, mm -hmm. not uh, cutting. Mm -hmm. So I think you probably might get a little hurt if she bites you, okay. but nothing too crazy. And hopefully they can, don't sting me. They won't sting you. They only sting in defense. So okay. if they're scared or if you hurt them, but these guys are pigs. If you offer them any food, any type of food, they're going to get excited. What I'll get you to do, and I'll, just to show it, is maybe drop in a few of these pellets and uh, you'll see exactly how they act when they eat. And then it'll maybe feel you, make you feel a little bit more confident okay. or nervous. I don't want to overfeed them or give them too much, so just a okay. tiny little snack because you're gonna have to give them their main meal here shortly. Yeah, well hopefully I don't accidentally scare them. No, that's fine. So they'll feel these tiny little oh. pellets and they'll just jump on top of each other. They're such good eaters. Yeah. If this video does what I think it'll do, in terms of the likes that your viewers are supposed to do, mm. you'll be hand feeding the rays, for example, little smelts like this, uh, and then we have a couple of pounds of food to feed everybody else. So if you guys want to see Katie feed this uh, <laughs> to, to my rays by hand, 2,000 likes. Hand, and, and pet the eel oh, is no, 5,000. No, not petting. <laughs> then we have our Lake Tanganyika Aquarium. Oh, yes, Lake Tanganyika. So this is filled with frontosa as well as shell dwellers. So I let algae grow throughout my tanks because I do find it looking, uh, it tends to make it look a mm -hmm. lot more natural. You know what? You actually helped change my opinion of algae. Of so, algae? Yeah, of algae. So I heard you talking about it in a video saying that it's just naturally occurring, it's good for nitrates, you know, that people get really pedantic over it, but you don't mind it. No. And I was like, actually, I don't mind it either. It's obviously something that it's a secondary effect um, mm -hmm. to long, wrong kind of lighting, lighting on too long, mm -hmm. excess nutrients, that sort of thing. Um, but this much algae isn't a big deal. This yeah. is relatively yes. uh, normal. That looks nice, I think. I really like green algae as well. Yeah, this is my, <laughs> this tank's under treatment right now. Uh, there are panda walrus in there. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a South American cichlid. Uh, incredibly beautiful once they get older, mm -hmm. but uh, they came in with a psyllate, which is incredibly common, uh, but incredibly dangerous if left untreated. Mm -hmm. This is a relatively new tank that is planted. So one of the things that I'm dealing with is a little bit too much algae and a little bit too much going on that I don't like. But as you can see, the main focus is to grow a bunch of vallus and have it blow all across the tank. Mm -hmm. And eventually uh, creating a really dark shaded area here and more brightly planted over there. Uh, and I think that would be a beautiful effect. Uh, even though this would be a little darker, all the plants will be up here. So there'll still be a wide open area. Well, these guys are hiding. They were out yeah. before, but it looks like there's nothing in there. Yeah, they're only babies anyways. It's you, interesting the thing they've got on them. You said you were going to do a video. Yeah, on that. I'm still yeah. working on it and gathering yeah. footage. So, unfortunately, uh, you know, when you have new fish, and this is why when you get new fish here, you either put them in their own aquarium, and technically, since they are all alone in this tank, it is a quarantine. The downside is it's 180 gallons. So, when I need to treat these fish, I have to treat 180 gallons as opposed to like a 20 gallon. And then there's this my secret area, which isn't anywhere near complete just yet. So this is clearly under construction and it is a quite a tight area. This is where I keep my fish food and my access to water and whatnot. But we have 12 15 gallon tanks here. Mm -hmm. uh, these are going to be on a rack on a do-it-yourself filtration system 
and in each tank we're going to be breeding different types of fish from uh, plecos to uh, killifish <laughs> to maybe even guppies or maybe even betas something like that but um, what I really want to focus on uh, is a lot of fancier plecos I also want to get maybe even a whole row cool. into some different types of conservation definitely going to be keeping a lot of delicate fish in here mm -hmm. but uh, because of the new rack, this one, again, is one of my projects that took mm -hmm. a uh, the back shelf, the back burner, just for the time mm -hmm. being. I thought that was like a decorative LED light. <laughs> and it's my <laughs> that would look quite light. nice. That's how I light it nice up. Nice little warm light in there. That's just an extension <laughs> cable. I love my extension cables. That's going to be awesome. I love fancy plecos. Yeah. And you make good money from selling them too. Are you, are you yeah. going to breed them to sell them or no. just for a project? I don't think just people? for projects. Yeah. I've done breeding to sell in the past. I did discus. Um, and uh, you might even want to check yeah. that video. Right. if you want to check out the realities of breeding yes. fish the video is called how i made twenty thousand dollars in one month selling discus mm -hmm. or breeding discus it's a good video i've yeah. watched that one it, i made it a while ago but it's the reason why i got out of breeding to sell obviously once everything's actually up and running there'll be a lot more to talk about a lot more mm -hmm. to show but uh in this rendition of the gallery i'm just opening things up brightening things up and bringing in more of a variety and different sized aquariums because for the longest time i always did like 120 gallon tanks 180 gallon tanks and never like a variety of sizes like i've never had really had a cube where i could do a planted beta tank because i think that's what i'll do here mm. um, oh, that'll be nice yeah all of the ideas for these tanks are set up now and maybe we'll discuss a lot of this stuff in the podcast that uh, Katie and I are going to do live on my Twitch and then it's going to be uploaded mm -hmm. to my uh, YouTube, my, my podcast YouTube channel. Uh, by the time you guys see this video, it'll already be done and mm -hmm. uploaded. So maybe Katie will lead uh, mm -hmm. a link in the description so you can see Katie in long form yeah. interviewed where I ask her questions mm -hmm. and get her to kind of open up about her hobby and uh, some of her passions about it and whatnot. Well, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. And if we get to 2,000 likes, we'll do a feeding video. Yeah. And 5,000 no, likes, no. she will pet the eel. No electric eel, that's not happening. Let me know what you think as well. And if you want to see more collaborations like this, because I'll be doing plenty of these videos from my USA trip, I guess we'll get doing some of these projects and some of the videos that you want to do as well of moving some things around. Yeah, so on my channel, I'm going to get her to move uh, Tyrese the Pahaka Puffer and his decorations to the tank. I'm probably going to get her to also help me with the wood from the piranha tank. That's a little iffy. I'm a little worried about that one. Yeah. We'll see what happens there, but if you want to see that, uh, I'll have that on my channel. And I think you guys will enjoy seeing her from that perspective mm -hmm. of me putting her to work. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.